Hello everyone, and in this video I'm gonna survive as a SWAT member in the zombie apocalypse. Let's jump in. As I spawned in, before going to greet my SWAT friends, I did decide to get some materials and loot first. In one of the chests there was a sword, a gas mask and also some apples. The first time going around looting everything I did have to be very careful and run around the zombies. Because I was not ready for their bites in case they would go after me. Suddenly it did start raining and nighttime was setting in very quickly. That meant a lot more zombie spawns but luckily for me I did find some more loot such as iron leggings and also fireworks and they will come in useful if I find elytra wings. Going around the market and looting some more chests I did find a literal chainsaw. The chainsaw was a lot better than a golden sword and I did test it out on one of the zombies. It is a 3 shot kill and that is a pretty good weapon for the starting days. Some time passed and it was already completely dark outside so I was looking for a bed to sleep in real quick. Fortunately for me, I did find some Glock 18 ammunition and also a flashlight. But again, really unfortunate that I still did not find the Glock 18 itself, only the ammunition for it. So I guess as the time goes on, perhaps we will find a Glock and even more weapons. After all, how can I call myself a SWAT member if I don't have a lot of weapons at my disposal? And as nighttime struck, as usual I needed a place to sleep at. I left my previous compound because I did not feel safe there anymore, considering zombie hordes roam more and more when you stay in one place. Looking around I did find a diamond helmet and also a pistol. The pistol worked out great because it was actually a Glock. And that means the Glock magazine that I found before fits perfectly. Now I am armed and dangerous. Looking back at day one, it was very, very bountiful. I found plenty of loot, weapons, ammunition and also supplies, considering a chainsaw if I ever need to use it. But that was it for day one and hopefully the next days will be even better. As I was making my way through the city, I did encounter a secret cellar. It wasn't so secret because the entrance was right in the open and the lever opened up the do doors quickly. Either way, there wasn't any good loot apart from a compass. The compass will be useful in the days to come, but for now, I'm more of in search of guns because guns is what you need to survive the absolute dreaded hordes that roam these streets at night and even during the daytime. But of course, they are a lot rarer during the day. Walking around even more, I did encounter a some sort of front yard in front of a big mansion and there were a lot of zombies. Considering I didn't have a lot of ammunition, I had to be very, very precise. Also, it's very weird because one shot zombies is possible if I put on headshots, but for some reason the Glock 19 just doesn't kill from a headshot. I'm not sure if that's how IRL works, but definitely Minecraft is very weird and the zombies somehow don't want to die if you hit them in the head. Other guns do kill them from one tap to the head, so that's still good. Checking out the loot, there were just general necessities like shovels, bread, food and random supplies. As dusk hit, I was just looking for a place to sleep at, primarily not the previous one because the previous one was very very ruined. In this apartment that I walked in, it was like a micro apartment, it was small but it had a lot of materials for me like coal that I could use in the future for furnaces and other endeavors. Luckily for me, the place was not infected with zombies and I did feel a lot safer sleeping here, you could even forget that there was a zombie apocalypse outside. And my second day was coming to a close, so that meant that I could finally sleep the night in peace in my new bed. I still did not find a backpack which will have a sleeping bag. That will actually ease off the strain of needing to find a new place to sleep every single night. It's either you're sleeping or a zombie horde gets you. On the next day, it was raining, so I did decide to go into a few houses and as usual loot up. Unluckily for me, I did walk in into a very big zombie spawn and my ammunition ran out very quickly. And the bad thing is I don't have any more, so I either need to find ammunition 
or get a crafting table to craft the ammunition for myself. The place that I entered was booby trapped because the chat did say the mayor approaches. That can only mean one thing, a lot of zombies and maybe even a boss. So the mayor of the city wanted to greet me himself. But fighting off zombies with the chainsaw did prove to be quite difficult. They were hitting me for nearly as much as I was hitting them. Luckily for me I did have a few pieces of armor and I was armed with a chainsaw. Be it, it didn't require any fuel or did any sufficient damage. It was just like a regular sword. In the same building I did find a literal Glock magazine, so that was very lucky for me, but also pretty unlucky. The ammunition spawns depending on the weapons that spawn in the vicinity, and that means the Glock spawned in and that and also ammunition. I'm just gonna have to wait and see if I will find a minigun eventually or an RPG. But a sniper rifle is still what I'm primarily looking for because the sniper rifle allows me to take out zombies in the distance without them even noticing me. Plus, I can walk around big zombie hordes and not attract them. Being safe is my number one concern into surviving 100 days. Sun was setting in yet again and walking into one of the buildings, there was a grave robber and also some smaller zombies. I quickly got rid of the zombies, but I was not expecting the gun that I was about to find. The gun that I received was a P90. A P90 is a submachine gun. It has quick pace of fire and average damage. What struck me really as unlucky is the gun did not spawn even with one magazine, so the gun was absolutely empty in the beginning. That meant I had to go looting the nearby buildings in hopes of finding a P90 magazine. Seeing as nighttime was approaching and I was pretty low on ammunition and my new gun did not even have any ammunition, I had to play it safe. Zombies could be lurking around any corner and could just spawn in a literal horde. Nighttime struck yet again and I was again looking for ammunition. Luckily for me, one of the buildings did have a lot of chests with a lot of basic loot and also one very important part, the P90 ammunition. So I was really happy that I did get the P90 ammunition, but I am not happy although with the amount. I need a lot of ammunition and just finding one magazine was not very sufficient. If I'm to be attacked by a horde of zombies, one ammunition will do me no good. It's best if I just run away and hope for the best that they won't follow me or kill me in the meantime. But still, you gotta be happy for whatever you get inside of a zombie apocalypse. So I was still very happy, ecstatic even, and did decide to sleep the night inside of this building. Before I could sleep here, of course, I had to clear out the zombies on all the floors where they spawned in, play some torches, and even find a bed. I was ready to hit the sag, and as usual, I was just thinking of my achievements for this day, if I wasted too much ammunition for too little resources, or if the day was really good. This day, I did find a P90, a very fast-paced gun, and even one magazine for it, so overall, it was a good day. The next day I did go mining and luckily for me I did find quite a bit of materials and also quite a bit of zombies also. I did use my P90, newly acquired gun, to get rid of the zombie hordes that were spawning in inside of the caves. After that I did get some coal, some iron and some gold. I need to craft myself at least an iron set if I will survive the ever increasing zombie hordes. Now I know iron armor does not look like SWAT armor, but trust me I will get even bigger armor upgrades where I will be looking like a SWAT member more. P90 is also a pretty SWAT weapon so you could say that I'm already in the gang, although I did not find my team yet. Running some more, I did find a school, and the school, as again, as with every single place, was infected to the brim with zombie hordes. Luckily for me, I did bring a gun and got rid of all the zombies. Now, you might say that this sound a little bit weird, but we're in a zombie apocalypse. There's nothing you can do. There's witches flying, zombies everywhere, and you just gotta do what you gotta do. Unluckily for me, I did spend quite a bit of ammunition on destroying these zombies. But looking for a little bit more, I did find like a literal endless supply of food, and also one very important thing, the medkits. Every school has a medkit kind of hospital type of thing, 
and I did find my materials that I was looking for. The med kits will come in useful when I do encounter even bigger hordes of zombies who will tear me apart, but I still did not encounter any mutated supernatural zombies. Running around during the night time is very dangerous, but luckily for me I did find a factory and as usual, factories have very very high concentrated loot, but they also have high concentrated amounts of zombies. So the zombie hordes were as usual very dangerous even more than regular hordes and primarily because they increased in difficulty and spawn rate. I also had to go in and bandage myself up before walking out and in one of the chests I did find another P90 magazine and also a baseball bat. The baseball bat will be very nice and I will use it instead of the chainsaw because the chainsaw is pretty much done. In a few next days I did encounter a literal vehicle spawn and the vehicle that did spawn in was pretty unfortunate, it was a mini boss, so that was really sad. I was hoping for more of a mo motorcycle sports car spawn but this wasn't so bad. It does fit in with the zombie theme and I do like it but there was one problem, I could not just drive it yet. I had to find fuel and fuel is what I needed. These vehicles take fuelium and for that I also need a literal jerry can. But despite the lack of fuel, the vehicle itself did look very nice and it didn't look like it needed anything else. So the wheels all were here, I could inspect the engine but overall it looked drivable. I think all that's left is for me just to get a few jerry cans in it. Running around some more, I did encounter a bakery and the bakery is like the least spot you expect to find some zombie boars and also high profile weapons, that's right, in the bakery was the first place that I found my first automatic rifle, it was a SCAR LH, and the unfortunate thing is I spent so much time looting factories and other sorts of places, hoping that there would be a literal good weapon, and I would never expect that I'd have to just walk into a bakery and load up on some high profile guns. But that's exactly what happened, shooting the zombies off my back, I did finally start to get to looting the chest and all of them had coal, other sorts of material spies, but the final chest had a literal scar and I was ecstatic when I found it. In another chest there was also a frag grenade and that only meant one thing, either a military personnel stayed in this bakery with a lot of food and kind of lived his days eating only bread and then he died from the bread diet because you can't survive on bread or it was just a very lucky spawn. Another day was coming to an end and as usual I was just making rounds on whether the trip was a success or not. How many bullets I wasted versus how many resources I received in return and this was again a pretty good amount of few days that did pass. I wasted quite a bit of ammunition but I did find a car. All that's left is for me to find some fuelium, some jerry cans, fill the baby up and go on a traveling adventure. I was in the mine, walking again, trying to find some better loot, perhaps even diamonds, and of course I did encounter quite a bit of zombies along my way, even more than usual this time in fact, and even the worms did block off one way from me when I did kill a zombie who was infected with them, and that meant I had to go even up to the surface level, get some more loot, and then go back down again. What was unfortunate was the amount of zombies attacking me, they just kept spawning in and that's primarily because the caves are very dark, the zombies spawn in the darkness, they can also spawn in the daytime but not to such a high extent. And I believe that they are also buffed when they spawn in the darkness and my flashlight that I use does not help them not spawn, it does not work like a torch, but if I set torches they wouldn't spawn, they wouldn't see me, but I am using a dynamic flashlight that does give give me a wider range of view, so that's kind of a perk that you can use it to find like greater things over a distance, but it does come with its problems, and that means the zombies will still keep spawning in. When I got back to my temporary base, I did craft another furnace, and that's primarily because I think that one furnace is not enough to smelt everything that I found. I found quite a bit of coal, gold and other materials, but I primarily need iron. I still don't have a full iron set despite wanting one for days now. 
Walking around the city, I did map out only one gas station. It almost seemed like this was the only gas station that I could find outside or even in the city. The zombies did not want to spawn here at all, so I didn't know what spooked them off. Perhaps I could even make my base around the gas station so the zombies wouldn't spawn as much as other places. But either way, I did come here only for one thing, is to get Fulium. And Fulium is not the only thing that I left with. I also find in one of the chests literal Scar H ammunition. So the Scar ammunition did finally spawn in, but it did spawn in in a weird place. It took me quite a bit of time to get over to this gas station, and it was the least place I expected to find Scar H ammunition, but I did expect to find some Fulium, and that is exactly what I got. I got a jerry can, and I can even refuel the jerry can when I use it up in the future, so the fuel is now not a problem at all. All that's left is for me to get back to my car. Finally making my way back to the actual minibus, I could now fill it up with fuel. Unfortunately, it takes I think a little bit more than one single jerry can, so I fueled the baby up with one jerry can and that was not enough, but still, it was drivable from now on and it was such a great vehicle, I was really happy with it. While refueling, I did get attacked by a zombie and had to defend myself as usual, but I do have enough ammunition at my disposal to actually allow me to do what I do best and that is destroy zombies bring peace because after all I am part of the SWAT team Finally getting in the minibus, I did notice that it was actually pretty darn fast. It did drive quite at a nice pace and it did allow me now to transport materials from point A to point B back to my base from all the way over to the military base and etc. And it's just such a good find. With a vehicle I can now traverse the land a lot more easy and it's definitely such a huge upgrade to my survival. After driving for an extended period of time, I did burn quite a bit of fuel, but I was back finally at my base and I could sleep the night quickly. I did arrive during the night time, so I did try quite a few hordes. Hopefully in the morning I will not get attacked by like a whole horde that will spawn in because I attracted them while traveling during, during the night. But after all, it's such a good find again that I did get a minibus, my first vehicle at that, and I'm very, very happy with what I got and I'm very grateful. So from now on, I have a lot of room for my SWAT buddy. So when I do find my buddies because I am on the lookout for my team, I will have enough space to fit three more people. Finally being back at my comfy bed, right beside my lantern and just like the general safety of this place, it does feel great. Finally I can sleep the night away and I wasn't sleeping in this spot for quite some time. I was on the lookout for cars, weapons and yeah overall these past few days have been very nice and I'm very happy with the outcome. I also completely forgot that I did put iron to smelt right before going off onto my adventure and it did smelt all of it actually and I could finally craft myself a literal chest piece, helmet and all the other necessities and also a sword. So yeah, this was actually a pretty good upgrade. I'm really happy with the iron armor, although again, it's still very, very late. I know the iron armor is like a day one thing people get, but nope, not me. I don't go mining often because in mines you can't get guns and without guns you're, you're not going to be able to survive a witch, a grave robber and three little zombies attack you all at once. A sword will not help you, no matter how strong it is. You need literal weapons, which is what I got and you can only get them in chests or by crafting yourself. And I can't craft them yet because I still don't have a crafting table. Guns require a special crafting table, which I do lack, I do not have it yet, but hopefully I will sometime in the near future. I can craft some good ammunition with it as well by combining gunpowder and iron ingots. My next plan of action was actually to find a helicopter or an airplane type of vehicle. Unfortunately, I did not encounter any landing strips just yet, only this big stadium. And as zombie apocalypse movies show, stadiums also tend to have very cool vehicles and loot because that's where the last evacuation points usually are. 
Unluckily for me, but also luckily for me, this stadium did prove to be quite useful and useless at the same time. No, I did not find a flying vehicle, but I did find one cool thing. For my P90, I did find a red dot sight in one of the chests, and also one ammunition magazine, and also some pork chops. Unfortunately, it's so difficult to get ammunition in this mod, it's absolutely crazy. The loot rate is insane, and they just don't spawn. The only way to survive is to continue scavenging. Going out into the stadium, I did encounter, of course, very, very big hordes of zombies that I did deal with, because I did have enough ammunition finally on my P90, but not enough to actually kill every single zombie around the stadium, only the ones are who are in my way. Also, it was very dark outside, so I could not see a lot of stuff. My flashlight did help quite a bit, but not to the point where I wanted. I think I'm gonna have to sleep at some point and come back here again in case I do miss any loot. And again, nighttime is very dangerous because zombies can literally spawn in and two to three shot you. So it's a very difficult situation to be in, especially if you're not as geared as I am. By this time, I'd already expect to have some diamond pieces, but unfortunately I don't, although I do have some good boots. I did encounter another zombie horde just outside a mansion that I was going inside of. I was hoping that the mansion would have really good loot, and to my surprise, it did finally have loot. I did get some diamonds from it, so it was a really good kind of mission to go in here. And I was basically looking for any signs of my SWAT teammates being anywhere around, or maybe they left some clues for me, but nope, nothing yet. Hopefully I will find some clue as to where they are at, so I could make it to the evac. Finally back at my base, I did decide to go back and sleep the night, because walking around during the night time does bring unwanted attention from all the zombies roaming the streets. Plus, I was not ready, not only equipment-wise, but also ammunition-wise. I was very low on ammunition, and I do need a literal ammunition depot to get myself up to date. So these survival days are actually on a very hardcore mode, so this is just hardcore, but this is the extra level hardcore. The next couple of days, as usual, I went into the mine. It's a little bit more mining than in my other videos, and that's primarily because I'm not getting as lucky with chests, but these chests did have some wheat and some iron, which I can use again to craft ammunition when I do get the crafting table and also craft myself even some more armor. After I grabbed some coal, I did went ahead and again looked for even more materials. Also, this cave, as many other caves, are very toxic. That means they have gas in them. If I didn't get my gas mask on day one, I would have been in trouble. And luckily for me, the gas mask does not run out of gas. So I can use it endlessly while in the mines, which is really, really useful. Going even deeper into the cave, I did encounter even more zombie spawns, gold, and finally diamonds. So this was the end game that I was looking for in this kind of excavation, and the fact that I did finally get diamonds did say that it's maybe about time for me to head into the nether very quickly to upgrade my armor set from diamond to literal netherite. But before I could even do any of that, I did get surrounded by a horde of zombie because the cave system did connect and all the floors were connected, there were like four different sides and four different pathways zombies were coming at me from, and I did get a little bit obliterated, but thankfully I did scavenge enough on the surface, and I did have enough ammunition to protect myself against the zombie hordes, so it did not prove to be very dangerous as it could have been if I was not prepared as I was. Getting back to the base again during the night time, as usual, this seems it's kind of a workplace for me already, so I go out in the morning and then I come back, put everything to smell, forget about it for a few days, come back and only then craft myself some upgrades. Well, luckily for me, I did get some diamonds this time, so it will be a little bit different. I will finally get the diamonds and craft myself some better loot, and also, this time I will not forget about the furnaces. The morning was not very sunny, in fact it was probably raining outside, but I did finally get to the furnace, get everything that I needed, and I did get to crafting. So this time I did use the diamonds to craft myself an upgraded sword, so I did recently upgrade my sword to iron, but now I will get a diamond sword, so we are making 
progress bit by bit, you could say, maybe not at the pace that I would like to, but this is survivable, this is definitely manageable, although the zombies do hit quite a bit hard and difficult, but either way, I am getting geared bit by bit, so I think I'm finally catching up, and the zombies aren't gonna be such a threat as they once were, and when I do get some golden apples, or even some potions, it's gonna be a completely different story. But again, I did not encounter any super mutated zombies, any bosses yet, so it's yet to come. So you test out my sword, I did find a literal grave robber right in front of my doorstep. So there was only one thing you could do with a grave robber that's waiting right in front of your door, and that's get rid of him. And the damage sword did prove to be quite useful, the damage is good, it's definitely a lot better than what I had before. Hopefully I will find something else, something cool, maybe like another chainsaw, but maybe this time it's gonna be a literally fuel power chainsaw. Who knows, but so far I have my bat, my guns, and also my newly acquired diamond sword. As I made my way down outside, I did encounter even more zombie hordes, and they did get my health down really, really low. So again, it's very dangerous if you're not prepared to fight them as I am. In the next few days, I did scavenge quite a bit of stuff with the help of my vehicle, and I did finally find my first golden apple in one of the abandoned places, apart from other cool materials like ammunition and grenades, and the golden apple was a very, very cool find, because now I do feel a lot safer, because I can pop a heal anytime. Plus, it was an enchanted golden apple. The rarity to spawn an enchanted golden apple, it's absolutely insane. It's a different kind of heal. It's gonna give me fire protection, it's just gonna make me unkillable for a few minutes, and then when walking around the aisle, I did also see two boars fighting each other, so it was kind of a tag team one boar was helping me defeat one other boar that the zombies don't even like each other. I think they're getting hungry because the zombie meat is not as tasty as human meat and there aren't any humans left. I did eat my enchanted golden apple as I was making my way back to the base because I did encounter a literally super huge zombie horde. I did throw grenades at them, fire my shots at them, used up my golden apple, and that is all because there were so many of them and they were right on my way back to the base. So that was a really unfortunate moment that they were so much stuck in one place, right in the middle of my pathway. If not for them, I would still have my golden apple going into the future days, but as soon as I found it, I did actually find it in a very good time, because I could use it, and I did maybe save myself here, because if I didn't have a golden apple, I would have to probably climb on a car, climb into a building, and just wait out the night, hoping that that witch would not spawn in and literally one-shot me, because witches are very strong. Going inside a fire station, I did encounter again a lot more zombies, but the fire station I was hoping for maybe like a fire axe or something cool of that sort, but I did get something even cooler. One of the chests did have super amazing potions and even more equipment for me. The zombies just didn't want to spawn inside of this building for whatever reason. I'm not sure why the building was dark, but the zombies just didn't spawn. So if I wanted like a super safe base, this was probably the place to be. Maybe zombies don't like firefighters, who knows, I think everybody likes firefighters, they go in and they save your life, risking their own, so you just can't not like the guys. Over the span of few days while I was in the mines, I did manage to test out the gas mask that it did work against the super bad gases, and it does, so there was only one option for me left to do, and that was to go inside the super nuclear nuked kind of city, the other side of this bridge has a super big city, the size of the one we were just in, but it's apocalyptic, it's absolutely destroyed by a blast, I'm not sure if it was a nuclear, probably was, because the radiation levels were off the charts, that's exactly why, why I need a gas mask, and maybe even a hazmat suit, but unluckily for me, I did not find a hazmat suit just yet, either way, looking for more things, I did find even cooler things inside of that apocalyptic city. Also, coming closer 
over to the bridge. In the middle of the bridge, there was some sort of blowout. I'm not sure if a bomb went out, but the bridge was absolutely destroyed, and I'm pretty sure that is to stop the people from going in into the dangerous area and scavenging inside the infected spots. The radiation threat is real, so it's really important that people are ready, or they will simply die when their hearts start disappearing without a proper equipment like a gas mask. Running around the terrain was absolutely destroyed in this city. You had to bunny jump everywhere you went. And by bunny jump, I just mean kind of the regular Minecraft parkour skill that I did attain while playing on the parkour maps. Either way, my zombie survival skills were really at a test here because this terrain did spawn a lot more irregular zombies. Nighttime could hit at any moment, or acid rain could start at any moment, and it did actually happen on the camera right here. And that was an absolutely crazy moment because sound started appearing and I didn't know when the zombies would spawn in from nowhere. Usually this means a horde is incoming, but luckily for me I did manage to leave the street and come to a safe spot where I could wait over and not get attacked by a completely unnecessarily big zombie horde out to get me. Running around, I did go into one of the houses. The house was really, really big, a lot of floors, a lot of chests, but one chest had some really good loot in particular for me, and that was the literal ammunition that I need for my guns. I know it's a lucky find, but so far that's the only way I can get ammunition. It's unfortunate. There was also a fire grenade that I could use on the zombies. I'm not sure if fire damages them, but I guess we're gonna see when I do find them. Looking around, I also wanted to look for a safe area. This place was absolutely devastated by the kind of explosion. The nuclear explosion absolutely devastated this city, and it was looking very, very rough. But all that's left for me is to keep up my head high and continue on trying to survive and find my SWAT teammates. It was already nighttime, I was still running around, but then out of nowhere, as usual, the Skeleton King appeared. I tried out my fire grenade and it did some good damage, especially to the Skeleton King. But the Skeleton King was actually not that difficult, because I did have quite a bit of guns to this time. And the Skeleton King dropped me some good loot when I did loot his chest. But that did not stop the zombie horde on coming onto me. They were absolutely endless. It took a lot of my ammunition to get rid of them and it was actually a pretty wasteful ammunition kind of scenario because I wasted too much ammunition on the hordes and on the skeleton king himself but I got very little in return so in the end I hope that I'm not gonna encounter any more skeleton kings in the near future as I'm quite not ready to waste so much resources for so little loot. After all I'm just trying to be sneaky peeky like in a city just looting my way through and trying to survive and get back to my SWAT teammates. As I got rid of the Skeleton King and the Horde, I did make my way into one of the houses, and the houses did have some good beds for me to sleep on. Looking back on this day, it was really, really dangerous, and I actually got really close to dying, so that was really unfortunate, but luckily I did survive, I killed the mutants, I killed the Skeleton King, and I was back to my usual self, ready to sleep and proceed with the next day. Going deeper into the mines, I did decide to get myself some more resources, some more iron, gold, etc. and coal, but I did not expect to find diamonds, which is what I did find in a few minutes, and that was actually a really, really good find. Primarily because I wasn't looking for diamonds, but I was just looking to upgrade my loot in general, free iron and just the regular materials. Finding diamonds would actually prove to be very useful because I can use them to craft myself some more loot and more powerful weapons. That means the zombies that are increasing in numbers by every day, I can actually stand a chance of fighting them finally. And then I found even more diamonds, which is really, really good because I can again use them to increase my survival chances. Finally making it back to my base, I did get some materials such as diamonds, iron, gold, redstone, and I did get quite a bit of diamonds. I will use these diamonds to craft myself some better loot. But this was it for today, so this day was coming to an end. But before going to bed, I did put some things to smelt, and then I hit the bed as usual. The night does settle in very quickly in this world, which is pretty unfortunate, but I'm not the one who's gonna complain. After all, I'm in a 
SWAT team out to get my bodies. I'm not sure where I will find them, I'm not sure where they went, but I will get back to my team and we will continue on as intended with the mission. Searching around the city, I did find under the bridge a kind of port, kind of army, military situated hospital. It was a very weird place, but there was a lot of technically blood you could say, but it was actually redstone, a lot of skeletons and a lot of zombies. After all, it was supposed to be a hospital and I did think that there would be quite a lot of loot that I could loot here and boy was I right because the loot I found was absolutely amazing. I found quite a bit of heals, quite a bit of ammunition, quite a bit of guns, everything because this was at the end of the day a military outpost to treat the super infected zombies and that means only the best, only the absolute best loot for me. breaking through one of the doors, there were even more chests in another room. Every chest had something to show about the zombie apocalypse and something to say maybe about the actual patient in this hospital. There were books and even guns, potions and flyers. There were papers with like writings on them, I did not read them, but it just proves how absolutely vast and beautiful this map and world is and I do have to not forget that I am in SWAT and the only reason I'm here for is to get the mission done and get back with my team. So that was the only thing on my mind, despite the actual apocalypse happening right in front of me, everything was ruined, I need to keep my head on track. Going through some more doors, there were even more iron doors that I could not open yet again because they did not have a ladder or any redstone kind of uh, activation point. But despite everything, I did find quite a bit of good stuff in this abandoned hospital you could say and I was really happy with the outcome. As I did loot the last chests in this building, I did not pick up anything irregular. There were a few guns, a few potions, but in the end I did make my way up to the very top of the tower to get a good look around on where I should head out next to. Going from the tower, I did craft myself a little paddle boat that I used to paddle across the ocean. And through the night, I did encounter a literal yak. At first, I thought it was Jeff Bezos, ready to save me and everyone on Earth. But no, it wasn't Jeff Bezos' yak. It was just the yak of some rich dude. And on the board, there weren't even any survivors. In fact, there were only zombies. So after getting rid of the zombies, I started to loot for chests trying to find anything that I could find of use. Unfortunately, there weren't any things at all waiting for me on the yacht, which was really sad because it was such a cool thing. I was really hoping for maybe a minigun, a secret endgame boss, maybe an RPG, because that's what rich folk have, don't they? But turns out it was just a regular yacht and there weren't anything on it. Although I will give props because the yak is so big, there are even zombies spawning everywhere on it. And that means there's enough space for zombies to spawn in, which makes it even scarier. So I used as an assortment of my guns at my disposal and that included the M4 and also the P90 and I did pick up a few more guns but I did not have enough ammunition for them to use them kind of all the time while running around the city so I guess for now as usual I will just switch out free all of my weapons and use all of my weapons at the same time so I wouldn't waste any ammunition too much on one of the guns because it's really difficult to come by with ammunition in chests and I cannot craft any ammunition yet for myself. I slept my way through the night on the yacht and in the morning I got back in my paddle boat and decided to paddle forward. I did encounter another cool unique looking boat and at first sight I thought it was a military boat but inspecting the boat I did not find any loot. In fact it was even so empty that it was unusual because usually th there is loot like scraps, food, ammunition but this time the chests were just empty empty. So that kind of made me wonder if I was here already before or there was anyone here before me who got the loot before me and didn't leave me even any scraps to find because how empty the boat was. 
there was a restaurant near the boats and I did port my way into the port. It was I think a boat restaurant because there was an entrance into it for boats which was very unique and weird at the same time but as I made my way inwards I did encounter quite a bit of zombies. They were going out from every single direction. They were just spawning in endlessly and it did prove to be quite difficult especially on my ammunition and I was looking for chests to loot because the loot is very sparse in this city let's not forget and if I am to survive till I meet up with my SWAT friends I need a lot of good resources materials and armor to protect myself against the hordes Running around some more and eating some bread to regenerate my health, I got attacked by a boar out of nowhere. I'm not sure if it's very hygienic to have literal zombie boars in a restaurant, but either way, this place was really dark and creepy, so that did not surprise me at all in any single way. Going across into another hall, I did encounter a literal room, a kind of meeting room for zombies. It was the craziest sight I saw in all of my life because this place was absolutely booming with zombies. The undead were walking everywhere and the variety of them did prove to be quite difficult. I so don't want to use my guns so sparsely, but putting on headshots does one shot them if I give them a literal headshot. So it's really a good way to kill the zombies, but it's also very wasteful on my ammunition if I do miss their heads. A body shot is a 2-3 to three shot kill, but a headshot is a 1 shot kill to the head. So it's really, really necessary for me to land my shots, but either way, sometimes I do whip out my melee to finish off the last remaining zombies. Nighttime already hit and I was still looking for resources but luckily for me I did find a tactical grip in one of the chests. I'm pretty sure I can use the tactical grip on one of my M4 guns but we're gonna have to wait and see if it does fit onto my gun. I'm not gonna say it while reading this script. Scavenging through some more buildings and some more hallways, I did encounter a literal P90 magazine that is very, very nice to have. I did run out of ammunition my, on my P90 and this did prove to be quite useful. Either way, going through some more things, I did find some more materials which were pretty useless in regards to my survival, but after all, a SWAT member such as myself only needs weapons, and a P90 is pretty much everything what I need. As I was done looting the building, I did make my way out outside. I quickly got attacked by some zombies as usual because it was nighttime. They were really, really aggressive, fast, and they did also spawn a lot more frequently. But nevertheless, I was making my way to a safe base. So before heading the bed, I did again recount all the ammunition that I spent and the materials that I got. Unfortunately for this day, it was a literal negative value, so I wasted a lot more ammunition and I didn't gain as much resources and loot in general as I wanted. So next few days will definitely have to be an improvement from this one. The next morning, I was just checking out my inventory and I did see that I do have enough diamonds for a literal diamond chest piece. Considering I was wearing an iron chest piece all this time, it will be a very good upgrade. But I will not downplay that the iron chest plate did provide sufficient protection against the zombies. The zombies had no chance of killing me and they will have even less chance now that I will wear diamond armor. Driving from my base on the highway, I did notice that there weren't any zombie hordes anywhere. So that was actually a very peaceful day and I did enjoy the kind of not such long lasting peace that I could get. Either way, this minivan is an absolute beast find and it's a very enjoyable ride. At the end of the day, as long as zombies aren't spawning in in hordes and trying to kill me and ruin my day, I'm happy. For now, I'm just going in search of loot as usual. So I did finally arrive at an abandoned airstrip. So this airport sort of thing was really, really abandoned. There weren't any survivors as usual, you, you could guess, but there were a lot of zombies as usual. So yeah, that's not really how I imagined my day going. 
and especially my night. So at night time I usually sleep, but this time I was out and about killing zombies. I was still looking for major loot and this being an airport, especially a military airport, will maybe provide some good loot for me. At least that was my go-to, that was my kind of accomplishment, that's what I wanted to happen. But I also understand that I need to sleep the night somewhere if I am to survive this. After the spawner, I did notice a literal chest with some ammunition and boots. The boots were neither right, so that means I got the best boots in the game already. And that's actually really, really good progress. The netherite boots are really powerful and you only get them if you have diamond boots that you upgrade with netherite ingots and then you receive netherite armor. So this is really cool and hopefully I'm gonna get a lot more pieces in the near future. The next morning when I went outside, I did notice an airplane. The airplane was absolutely amazing, it did not look damaged and it looked like a normal spawn. Luckily for me, I did have a fuelium canister. I fueled the baby up for a little bit and there it was. I actually drove one of these airplanes before so I already knew the controls, so it wasn't too difficult for me. But still, going to an airport and finding a literal airplane was kind of a stretch, but that's exactly what I was looking for. Now I can traverse the land at an amazing speed. As I continued my adventure, I flied through the night, and when the dusk was setting in, I did finally get back to my base. I could not find my base just like that, I had to fly around and look maybe for street signs that could remind me where my base was, so yeah, it was a very difficult situation, but when I did find my base, I did encounter a problem, where am I gonna land this baby? And I did actually manage to land the airplane on a road. It was fairly difficult at first because the controls aren't that easy, but it's on the easier side of the Minecraft mods because there are some mods which are super difficult and then there's this one which is actually pretty easy. But still, not that easy where you could do it blindfolded because if you crash, the plane will blow up and you will die. So it is a high risk, high reward kind of transportation. As again I got back to my beds, I finally could rest my feet, and yes, today's adventure was very, very good. I did find an airplane, I brought it back home, I did find some ammunition, guns, and even more fuel for my other vehicles, so it was overall a good day. The next few days were spent traveling the city and I did encounter a literal military base and as any military base they have big equipment, big guns and a lot of ammunition so that was exactly what I was looking for because I am looking for ammunition for all of my guns. Luckily for me I did find quite a bit of good materials and this army base did not disappoint me in the least. Apart from one thing it did not have any survivors. Very unfortunate that there weren't any military personnel ready on the station to protect me, greet me and transport me over with like a helicopter to a safe base and let me end the video already, but no, no, I did not find a single living soul here and my SWAT team was nowhere to be seen. I did find a secret hatch underground and I did follow the tunnel for quite a little bit but that amounted to nothing. I did not go out anywhere but I do believe that this is connected to the city metro. So if I go enough through the sub sewers thing and it's such a dangerous spot if you go in there because if they get you pinned there's no way you can get out. It's a literal box with them only. So if you run out of ammunition you can't reload your gun and you can't heal up instantaneously that's it. GG, you will be gone. And that is exactly what happened. Well, nearly at least. I couldn't go in because after I did go in, my health dropped to below half in one second. That was not a game I was willing to play, so I continued spraying the zombies over a distance. Luckily for me, I did have enough ammunition just for this fight, and that is exactly why you need to conserve your ammunition, because the zombies can spawn in and you can get obliterated in a matter of seconds. So this mod pack is definitely on the hardcore side and surviving 100 days here is definitely a real challenge. 
when I finished all of the zombies and also the two Skeleton Kings, I did loot the chests and did find a chest piece. The chest piece was super OP. It did allow me to kind of save myself from gunshots, from enemy other attacks like maybe melee attacks and it was just a super strong chest piece and it was also enchanted. So I did decide to put it on because it is better than the one I have right now even though it's diamond. I'm not sure which one will be better in the future but either way it's still a very good thing that I did find it and I'm pretty sure it's a very rare drop chance. As I did continue to loot the military kind of compound I did find a very cool thing and that was a DMR. A DMR is an automatic rifle. You know the rifle like an AVP, it shoots one shot, it's a bolt action, you have to clock it back and then shoot again. No, the DMR is literally a better gun. It's an automatic long distance rifle, it shoots amazing shots, it one shot zombies, although I did encounter one problem, it did not spawn in with a ice side. No sniper scope for me, unfortunately. Remember how rare it was to find a scope for my P90? Well, it's gonna be even rarer for the DMR. And the bullets also don't spawn in as well. I did have one magazine before from the barracks, but that was such a long time ago, I'm not sure if I encountered any more DMR mags just laying about anywhere nearby. But as I was setting out, I did decide to test out the DMR on a boar, and the boar did take two shots, and that's pretty good considering the boar has a lot more health than a normal zombie, so this is definitely a one shot for the regular zombie types. Going out even more into the building, I started to collect the MRE food. And that's because if I get enough MRE from the military compound, I won't need to get a farm of my own. That's right, I'm a 100 days player who does not want a farm because that is some extra necessities that I can't afford to have while I'm on the lookout for my buddies, ammunition and even more equipment while getting attacked by complete unruly hordes of zombies who are just trying to make me fail, make me fail the 100 days challenge, but I am trying my best to survive. I did find a secret room with a lot of cameras and computers inside and the, this this does make me believe that the military kind of knew that the zombie apocalypse was happening but they didn't care enough to get the civilians out of the city. This nuclear explosion also explains quite a bit why half of the city was absolutely devastated and destroyed by the nuke. That can only mean one thing, they did most likely shoot on civilians who they didn't even want to see. Save. So I am kind of the last defense along with my swap buddies just out in the world trying to make a better thing, better world for everyone, kind of the Robin Hood of the zombie apocalypse world. As I got enough equipment, I did decide to maybe speed run through the military base one last time, getting out all the necessary loot that it might have and then just leaving because I did spend quite a bit of time here and I did encounter even more witches, zombies and even lower levels which was absolutely astonishing like how much lower can this base go? Well I was gonna find out very soon it does go pretty low and I did finally make it outside on like the bottomest floor but the outside was actually not the outside that I was expecting it was like a different base. I did quickly go home. Upon getting back to a house, I did encounter some zombies in the hallway and they did put up quite a fierce fight and that only proves how more difficult the zombies become as the time passes. We are nearing the end of the video and the fact that the zombies can literally one shot me if they hit me from behind with the actual armor set that I have on just proves how difficult it is but luckily I did get back to my base and I did come prepared. I did have my inventory full of stuff so I had to make a chest room very quickly to kind of unload everything that I brought back. As I was emptying my backpack I did encounter one strange object, it did spawn in quite some weird things when I right clicked on it so I think that's the thing that dropped from one of the skeleton kings and it did give me a friend. He was not part of the SWAT team, he was not part of the navy seal, he was not my comrade but he was friendly and he was not a zombie, that's the most important thing. I'm not sure if he was even a human to be honest, he was kind of blue, that's all I can remember but as I put on my famine tunic I did feel 
a lot safer and with my new friend I did not feel as lonely anymore. So my 100 days adventure is going along pretty nicely and I'm definitely having a lot of fun surviving in this mod pack and these 100 days are gonna be one to remember. Also my base is absolutely amazing and perhaps it's a really cool change of pace to live in an apartment and not like a house or a farmhouse like I always usually do. Skipping a few days, I did find myself on top of a hill that I did follow from the ground floor. I was in the city and I did find a safe boss and this safe base was perhaps one of my SWAT members because it did have an MP5 and as we all know, the MP5 is a signature weapon of a SWAT, not soldier, but kind of a police officer, enforcer of the law, you could say, special operations team and it was absolutely insane. After all this time, I did find a some sort of mansion on a hill on a mountain of volcanoes and there was absolutely amazing loot. There were also dynamite in the chest that I did pick up because I might have to use them in the future to protect or kind of even blow up a bridge in case a zombie start piling in into a city or some sort of spot. Just like someone did nuke the literal bridge, I might nuke a smaller scale bridge to stop the zombie influx from coming over and taking over. You never know when they're gonna come, so it's better to be ready than to be sorry. As I wanted to before, I made my way back to the stadium, but again, I only got here when it was nighttime, so again, I did not see anything with like a super good visibility, although I did finally find one more chest with even cooler materials, and one of them even had ammunition for my new MP5. That can only mean one thing, it's time for a weapon upgrade. The MP5, I didn't have any stock on it, any equipment, but I do think that the gun is super cool. As I was walking out the arena, I did notice a super huge horde of zombies did spawn in, and that is because the days keep progressing, the zombies keep spawning in, harder, harder to kill, more of them, more health, more damage, everything, just an overall difficult situation. And this time, I was here again during the night time, and that meant again a lot of zombies spawned in, including another Skeleton King. Luckily for me, there weren't two Skeleton Kings this time, so I was lucky in that regard. After I got rid of the Skeleton King, I continued shooting the zombies, pigs, witches, everything that was around me, trying to get a piece off me. That is because I need to protect my SWAT, and as a honorable member of the Special Operations team, I have to pay respects to any of the SWAT members who also perished while trying to outlive the zombie apocalypse. I will keep their remembrance living on with me, I will be the man that will do his solemn duty in protecting and finding the SWAT team, evacuating waiting, getting back, seen out, and saving every single person. Although, I don't think there's a lot of people left in this city, because there's quite a bit of zombies and not a lot of survivors, I ain't gonna lie. Although I quickly realized I was getting pretty much run over, they just kept spawning in, so yeah, if I was to survive 100 days, I had to make a run for it, and I had to do it quickly. Getting back to my bed one last time, for the last, na no, 100th time, I did manage to calculate whether my outgoings this expedition were good or not, whether I received enough loot, and yes, I did. I did spend quite a bit of ammunition, maybe even too much, I could have actually run around the zombies and not shot them so much, but I did collect a new gun, ammunition, and I was happy overall. Pat yourself on the back guys, because we did finish the 100 days challenge in this amazingly difficult zombie mod pack, which will be available to download from my Discord server for absolutely free. So subscribe to the channel, like the video, and I hope I'll see you guys in the next one, and as usual, make sure to leave a comment with your opinion down in the description on what video I should record next, and as usual guys, see you in the next one. Peace guys.